us in the presence of your son, Jesus Christ. We think back uh, all those many, many, many years ago, and that wonderful gift that was given to us that continues to uh, be the foundation of our lives to this day. And we just ask that uh, what we do here tonight, that uh, the children singing and all the other participation that happens here tonight, that uh, it would be pleasing and glorifying to you. Be with us as we uh, continue into this Christmas season. May the lesson of uh, what you're about to see tonight, what everybody's about to see here tonight, be, be one that we can carry from here and put into action in our lives. Bless all that we do here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, one uh, request. If you would please double and triple check your cell phones to make sure that those are set to stun mode or something like that, just as long as it's quiet. We'd appreciate it. Thank you and enjoy the show.
I can't believe it. Mrs. Westerup giving us an assignment over the break. What was she thinking? It's Christmas. I know. I don't want to think about school during break. Well, I think it's kind of cool. You think homework is cool? What? Are you kidding? Have you guys actually even read the assignment? Of course not. No? What does it say? Christmas group project. Cake. Cake? Ooh, maybe this is good. Listen, Cake, Christmas Act of Kindness Experiment. As a group, read Luke 2 and then reflect on your assigned character. Brainstorm ideas of how you and your group can display an act of Christmas kindness that reflects that character. Be prepared to report how your cake affects those around you. Ah, uh, cake. Hmm. Okay. T Tucker, not that kind of cake. Okay, so which character do we have? Let's see. Tim and I have the innkeeper. Allie, Rose, and Rob have the shepherds and angels. Audrey and Luke have the wise men. Beth and Greg have God. And Tucker, hmm, Tucker, it says you. Hmm, that's weird, but before we do anything else, let's read Luke 2, like Mrs. Westendorp said. I'll start. Joseph went to Bethlehem to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. While they were there, the, di the time came for the baby to be born, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and light him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wise men came from the east to worship him. The star which they had seen in the east went before them. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. They, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, I love the Christmas story. Me too. And this assignment makes me look at it a little differently. Yes. Cake. Hmm. No, Tucker. All the characters. How do we show kindness like they did? The innkeeper. I already have an idea. I've got to talk to my dad first, but can you guys meet me back here? Okay, sure. I'm kind of excited. This assignment might actually be fun. Cake!
star shining in the sky Below in Bethlehem the king is sleeping Oh what a glorious night Oh what a glorious Hey, Tim, I brought the socks. My mom said you called and asked for them. I've got the hats and gloves you asked for. And I have the coat. Snacks. I've got the snacks. <laughs> Everything can go in this box. Thanks, guys. What are we doing? Yeah, what is all this? Well, our character is the innkeeper, so this is our act of kindness. Your cake! What? I don't get it. This isn't an inn. Why all these things? These aren't items for an inn. We don't have an inn. We don't even own a house. Right. But when you think about the innkeeper, he didn't have any rooms to give either. But he did give Mary and Joseph a way to stay warm and keep dry. But we all have homes to help us stay warm and keep dry. Exactly. We do. But there are people in our town that do not have homes. In fact, you might find people in places you don't even expect. How can we help? Like this. Our grandma works alongside with several other people at a place called the Martin Resource Center, started by Mr. and Mrs. Harvey and Carol Visser in 1982. Whoa, the late 1900s? <laughs> <laughs> yes. God laid it on their hearts to really help people that struggle to have enough money for food, clothes, and other household things that we all take for granted. They've been working hard for over 41 years to help the people in Martin and other surrounding communities. That's really nice. Are we going? Yes. Our dad says he can take us over there. We can give him this box of items to give out to the people to help them stay warm. What a great idea, Tim. This definitely is an act of kindness. Yes. Kate.
That was really cool. I know. It is so interesting to see how many needs there are right in this town. I am so glad you thought of that as your act, guys. I love knowing that there are things I can do to help others all the time. I definitely think that part of the experiment was a success. Yup. Cake. <laughs> Tucker, is that all you can say? So who wants to go next? We will. We've got the shepherds and the angels. Have you thought about what to do? When we are reading Luke 2, it says that the she angels sang to the shepherds to tell them about Jesus. Of course you have an assignment about singing. You love to sing. But how can singing be an act of kindness? Well, I had an idea. When I was visiting my grandmother at the retirement home last week, she was telling me about one of her friends. Her friend's family lives in a different state, so she doesn't get very many visitors. So are we going to visit her? Actually, I thought we could go bigger than that. We could visit several people that don't have family. But what does that have to do with singing? We're going to go caroling at the retirement home. And? Oh, I get it. OK, cool. My mom said she can take us and we can sing and visit with everyone there. Hopefully we can provide joy and show them kindness so that they don't feel so lonely. Great idea, Allie. Come on, let's go. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> we are going to need to make a list of songs. I love to sing.
So we are going to take this time to have a little bit of an intermission, if you will. Um, we are doing the program. It's called Cake, right? Christmas Acts of Kindness Experiment. And like I do with all of our programs that we do, I always tweak it just a little bit to make it um, more applicable for our situation. So the script, the original script, talked about having a um, homeless shelter where people can go to sleep. Now, Martin does not have a homeless shelter, but we do have a wonderful facility called the Martin Resource Center. And the more that I learned about this, I've only been in the community for like 30 years, so I was very shocked to hear that they had started this in the late 1900s, <laughs> right? 1982. Now, I don't know if Harv and Carol Visser are here right now, um, or Amanda Shoemaker, but these are, yes, Amanda is here, wonderful. They are a couple that doesn't necessarily like a lot of attention, Mr. and Mrs. Visser, but they have taken the Bible verse, 1 John 3, verse 18, and that says, Dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Now, like I said, I've only been around for 30 years. I don't know how old Harvey and Carol are. I'm going to guess they're in between 70 and 90. Is that a fair guess? Right? They're old enough to be tired, right? They're tired of doing this work. They have no intention of slowing down. And the more I learn about this and the, about them, the more my heart is really touched. I'm like, oh, yeah. Let's not, let us not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. And the rest of the play talks more about different actions that we can do. I would encourage you to take um, one of their brochures that they have back there. And Amanda is here. Amanda Shoemaker is one of the volunteers, along with David's grandmother, who does, in fact, work, volunteer there, along with I don't know how many other people, but I'm so glad that they do. There's always work to be done. They go. They do so much more than I can ever explain. Go on their Facebook page. You can see what they do. There is a need for help there, too. If you have it on your heart to possibly see what you can do with your kids, it doesn't have to be every day, it doesn't have to be every week. It could be once a month, first Saturday of the month, let's go over there and see what we can do. I'm sure, Amanda, would you be willing to talk to some people about this afterwards? I can introduce you to whoever you need to know to talk to about that. So right now, we are going to pretend we're Christmas caroling in the streets of Martin, and we're going to ask you to join us. Um, most of you should have copies of the Christmas carols that we're going to be doing, and please, if you'd like to stand during this time, you may stand and stretch your legs a little while we sing some of these Christmas carols. Thank you.
sing some of my favorite carols. I know, mine too. I think my favorite part was seeing some of the faces on people while we were singing. And they gave us such great hugs. It seems like that might be their favorite part of Christmas this year. Actually, it might be one of my favorites too. That act of kindness was definitely one I want to do again. Yup. Cake. <laughs> okay, so it's our turn. We've been thinking about this one a lot. Oh good, you have the wise men, right? You got an easy one. We did? How is that easy? Well, they gave gifts, and we all give gifts at Christmas. Yup, done. That was easy. Next. Whoa, wait a minute. I don't think it's all that easy. Yes, we all give gifts at Christmas, and sure, that is kind, but I don't think that's all there is to this experiment. See? Cake! But how can they be more than just giving a gift? Well, normally I just give gifts to my family, friends, and teachers, don't you? True. That's my normal list. But what if we give gifts to someone we don't know? Someone we don't know, why do we do that? Uh, cake? Right, Tucker, an act of kindness. The wise men didn't know Jesus. They knew about him, but they hadn't met him or his mom or dad. They were strangers. But they still gave him gifts. And not just any gifts. Really good and meaningful gifts that his family would need. So what does that mean for us? My church actually has a project they do for families in need. These families would not normally be able to have gifts for Christmas. We could pick a family and purchase and wrap the gifts to deliver them. How would we know what to get? They have a list of things the family wants and need, like clothing sizes and toys that kids like. Wow, I can't imagine not having gifts for Christmas. Me either, Greg. But even more than that, this reminds me that God knows all of our needs and takes care of them. True, he provides everything that we need, and now we get to be a part of his plan for providing what this family needs. How cool is that? We could get things they need for school, and new clothes. Oh, this is exciting. I have some money from mowing yards that I could use to buy the gifts. Do we have the list for the family? My mom has it. She said she'll take us. What are we waiting for? This might be my favorite part of the experiment now. Yes, cake. If faith can move the mountains, let the mountains move. We come with expectations, waiting here for you. Sing 
about everything, even the little gifts like the groceries. I don't think I've ever been that excited about groceries. I have, for cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's our turn now. We had God. Whoa, that's huge. I mean, how are you going to capture that one? Didn't he give us everything? You're right, he did. So we really had to think about this one. God's greatest gift to us at Christmas is his greatest gift to Jesus. Again, how are you going to do that? God's gift reaches everyone. So I started thinking about ways we could reach a whole community. That's a good idea, but it could take us forever. Jesus is called the light of the world. Right. So we thought about Christmas and lights and the whole community. Ah, the suspense. I have, this huge I have this huge bundle of Christmas lights. We are going to light up the town. You mean everywhere? Well, we thought that might be a bit too much for us. But mm -hmm. what about bringing light to the place people can go to find Jesus? The church! You're right. We are going to decorate and bring light to the whole community by pointing them towards Jesus. Yeah, how fun! Let's do it! Angels, let your song begin
sins no more for Jesus is greater he is greater angels let your song begin here comes heaven all creation part of the Christmas story. You're right. I wasn't there that first Christmas, but listening to you guys and doing all these acts of kindness reminded me that I really am part of the story. I'm not sure I understand. So the acts of kindness are more than just actions? I think that I think that the experiment was to help us see that our actions tell a story. The story of the greatest gift of love. You mean like the story of the innkeeper and the wise men and the shepherds? Exactly. Those are the examples for us to follow. And the ultimate example is in God's gift to us, Jesus. Are you saying you are a part of God's story by giving the homeless shelter and Christmas caroling? Or you make a difference by helping families that don't have gifts? Or by pointing others to Jesus? Yes. I think that these actions are how we show God's love to the world around us. These actions are the proof of his love for us. God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus. So these, we can show these same acts of kindness every day. So Christmas shouldn't be the only time for acts of kindness. It should be an everyday kind of cake. As I've said before, we know cake. Only love remains. 
Didn't they do a wonderful job? Great job, everybody. Nice job. It's Christmas time, and uh, we're just coming out of Thanksgiving, too, and there are just some wonderful people that I want to make sure that we thank tonight. First of all, I'd like to thank Mrs. Heidi Bartman up here on the piano. And I'd like to have Mrs. Wubbin stand up. Julie Wubbin is, just does such a wonderful job with all these students, so. Uh, we are really, truly blessed. We are blessed to be able to work with these students, and uh, we just thank you for entrusting them to us. We are blessed to have a fabulous staff that just pours their love into these kids each and every day. So. Staff members, would you stand up a minute, too, so we can thank you for all your work with the kids. That makes a lot of them very uncomfortable, so I kind of like doing it. I'd also like to uh, thank our uh, current school board, and there are many of you also here who have been past school board members, so thank you for all your support and for all of you who uh, give so much uh, support and especially your prayers that uh, really help everything happen here at East Martin. So we just really thank you for that. So it's a time of great blessing. We hope that tonight's been a blessing for you. And now at this time, I think I've answered, I think I've made all my announcements I need to make. Just remember that we each now think about our own Christmas acts of kindness experiment, right? And to continue that throughout the year. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful message. And now I want to ask Gabe, I mean Tucker, a question. What do we do next? Cake. That's what we do next. So thank you again for coming and enjoy some cake together in the narthex. Thank you. Have a great night.
啦啦啦啦啦。